Alright, so back to looking at this firearm self-defense infographic, but before I do, I want to briefly sum up my findings in the last video, where I looked at the CDC report and the study by Gary Kluck and Mark Gertz. So the CDC report put self-defense uses of guns at 500,000 to 3 million, and skeptics used the NCVS study, which puts it at 108,000 as a counter-argument. The NCVS study is designed to survey crime victimization, not firearm self-defense, and it's conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice, so people are less likely to report self-defense out of fear they may have broken a law. The report by Gary Kleck and Mark Gertz, which estimated firearm self-defense at 2.2 million to 2.5 million, does suffer from flaws of its own, though, such as anonymous digital dial, telephone survey method, which makes lying easier, telescoping error in which it's difficult for respondents to remember whether an event falls in the five-year research range, and recall error, where respondents may not remember events clearly or forget them altogether. The survey primarily looks at the one-year recall period for more accurate data, which gives them a positive response rate of fi uh, 56 to 66 out of their 4,997 sample size. From this, a percentage was calculated and applied to the U.S. population for their 2.2 to 2.5 million self-defense figure. That seems like a lot, but it's not really when you consider that means 1% of guns in circulation are used defensively and 3% of people with access to a gun use them defenses defensively. I think a better way to express the figure would be on a per capita basis, which, if my calculations are correct, would put it around 1,120 per 100,000 at the low end and 1,320 per 100,000 at the high end. It gives the figure some context and makes it less unbelievable. The 2.2 to 2.5 million figure may be extrapolated from a small, small positive response rate, even if the sample size was decently sizable, but the NCVS study is even more flawed, and to use it as a counter-argument is to me like going up to bat in a baseball game using a putter, hitting the ball a short distance, and breaking the putter. Then someone says, I don't think that's the right tool for the job and they step up to the plate with a different, uh, with a wiffle ball bat, which hits the ball further, but also breaks. And then the person with the putter says, Ha! See, your tool didn't work either, despite the fact that it was a more suitable tool to the task. Now on to the infographic. Here it claims that there are 270 million civilian firearms in America. Firearm ownership estimates in the U.S. are pretty widespread and consistent, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this point. This figure comes from gunpolicy.org, which puts estimates of civilian firearm ownership from 270 million to 310 million. So they're using the lower end of the figure. If their goal is to make it look like there are less guns in circulation, being that the figure I typically see thrown around is the 310 million one, I can't say that I understand why. Because if their claim is that more guns in circulation would promote greater safety through self-defensive use, they should want to use the higher one. Whatever their motivation for using the smaller figure, the source for that is the Small Arms Survey of 2007. As you can see here, the table is much too large, and the text too small to read with the zoom at 100%, so I zoomed in on it, looked at the row for the US, and cut the title bar out and put it right above the row so we can see the data more easily. So here we have no estimate for registered guns, an unregistered independent estimate at a low of 250 million, an unregistered independent high estimate of 209 million, low totals and high totals from outside sources to match, a gross national income per capita of $43,560, and a population of 304,201,200. The high-end figure of 310 million comes from this report by the Congressional Research Service on Gun Control Legislation, published in 2012. Here you can see their estimates gathered from various sources ranging from the years 1994 to 2009, and you can see a general upward trend in gun ownership. 
By 2009, there were approximately 310 million guns available to citizens, 114 million handguns, 110 million rifles, and 86 million shotguns. There's some interesting wording regarding these gun circulation figures, which is that these firearms are available for sale to or were possessed by civilians in the United States, meaning that some unknown portion of these figures may not even be guns that are actually owned by civilians, but may be sitting in storage at some gun dealer or maybe even gun manufacturers, dependent upon whether the guns in manufacturer warehouses are considered to be available available for sale to civilians. That's why it's important when talking about these figures to specify that these are guns in circulation rather than gun ownership figures. The next point is that 200,000 times a year women use a gun to defend against sexual abuse. This comes from the same Gary Kleck and Mark Gertz study that the 2.2 to 2.5 million self-defensive gun uses per year figures come from. The figure comes from this table, which puts 8.2% of the total reported defensive gun uses having been related to the crimes of rape or sexual assault. These figures suffer from the same problem of extrapolating their low positive response rate to the total U.S. population. By multiplying their 8.2% figure by the low-end defensive gun to use total of 2.2 million, we get 180,400 uses of a gun to prevent rape or sexual assault. By multiplying their 8.2% figure by the high-end defensive gun use total of 2.5 million, we get 205,000 uses of a gun to prevent rape or sexual assault. If the 8.2% figure comes from the number of times a gun was used to defend against rape or sexual assault in relation to the total 213 defensive gun uses over a five-year period, that means the data is extrapolated from only roughly 17 reported, reported uses of a gun in this manner. If it comes from the 66 or 56 defensive gun uses over a one-year period, it's extrapolating 200,000 from only four to five reports of defensive gun use uh, in sexual assault. In my opinion, that's quite a stretch. I tried finding other sources for a self-defense figure for rape and sexual assault, but unfortunately all the ones I could find cite the same Gary Kleck and Mark Gerd's study. Next we have this point, which says that three of five polled felons say they won't mess with an armed victim. This comes from the report from the U.S. Department of Justice titled The Armed Criminal in America, A Survey of Incarcerated Felons. As with the earlier report that I looked at in the last video, I need to go over some boring shit again, the research methods. Uh, the results were compiled from a self-administered questionnaire given to 1,874 incarcerated felons in 10 states. Data was collected from August 1982 to January 1983. 1,982 questionnaires were submitted, of which 108 were disqualified, leaving the 1,874 sample. Only men who were in prison on felony convictions who were sentenced on or before 1979 were allowed to participate in the survey. They made no effort to restrict sampling based on the nature of the felony or crimes committed with guns. As a result, about two-fifths of those surveyed claimed to have never committed a crime with a gun. Questionnaires were administered in groups of 10 to 100, with three members of the research staff present to answer questions and clarify instructions. The possibility of lying was an issue with the survey, but the survey was also limited in that it could not represent the entire criminal population due to underrepresentation of juveniles who may not continue criminal activity into adulthood and the absence of first-time offenders in the survey who often do not serve in serve prison time. Their sample probably differs from the total criminal population in that those surveyed are probably older, have been involved in crime for longer, are likely to have been more violent or committed more serious crimes, maybe less skilled criminals, uh, 
to have been in incarcerated for their crimes in the first place, and finally may be less responsive to the risks of, criminal of a criminal career, since they were not deterred by the risks of imprisonment. So here we can see survey questions regarding a respondent's motivations for carrying a gun. On the left column is the reason they carried a gun, and then in the columns to the right are the percentages of respondents which selected each of the four importance ratings for that particular motivation. The X1N column indicates the average importance rating computed with not important at all being given a 1 rating and very important giving being given a 4. The highest importance rating motivations by the majority percentage in, in very important are don't have to hurt the victim, presumably meaning that, say for instance in a robbery, you're less likely to have to engage in physical violence with someone if you threaten them with a gun. Uh, chance victim would be armed and prepared for anything. Among those armed with a weapon other than a gun, their most important motivations were don't have to hurt the victim, feel better with a weapon, and ready to defend myself. When respondents that were armed but not with a gun were asked why not carry a gun, the most important reasons were just asking for trouble, getting a stiffer st sentence, never needed a gun for my crimes, and somebody would get hurt. For those who were unarmed entirely, the importance ratings were similar. So, 50% of the respondents said they carried a gun because there was a chance the victim would be armed. Here we see some interesting numbers regarding attitudes of criminals regarding an encounter with an armed victim. Among those surveyed, regardless of how or whether they were armed, 25% strongly agree that a criminal is not going to mess around with a victim if he knows he is armed with a gun. Now, while reading this, a thought occurred to me regarding the wording that hadn't before. When they say mess around, I have to wonder if there is some room for error in the interpretation of the question. On one hand, the respondents may interpret mess around as meaning that if the victim is armed, they will be less likely to commit the crime. On the other, mess around could mean that the criminal knows that shit just got real, and it's kill or be killed. Just my two cents there, maybe the researchers should have been more specific with language. Anyway, moving on, 31% agreed that they are not going to mess around with a victim they know is armed, 35% disagreed, and 9% strongly disagreed. So according to the infographic, there were 3 out of 5 polled saying they wouldn't mess with a victim that they knew was armed. Here we have 56%, which is just 4% off, not that big a deal. But maybe they should have just gone with the specific percentage. On the other hand, that 44% that disagree or strongly disagree kind of worries me. So apparently 44% of criminals, when knowing their victim has a gun, don't have any fucks to give. Moving on to the other survey questions, 74%, almost three-fourths of criminals surveyed said they avoid houses when people are at home because they fear being shot. 57% are more worried about meeting an armed victim than they are running into the police. 81% said a smart criminal always tries to find out if their potential victim is armed. 85%, sorry, 58% said a store owner who is known to keep a gun on the premises is not going to get robbed very often. And 24% said committing crime against an armed victim is an exciting challenge. These questions illustrate what I think is pretty obvious. Criminals like victims who won't or can't fight back, but the most interesting figure to me is the one that the infographic didn't use, which is that 81% say that if a criminal, a criminal is smart, they try to find out if their victim is armed. Take that in combination with the 56% who say they won't mess around with an armed victim, and you can only conclude that mere gun ownership is a strong deterrent to crime. Now, if you take all this data together, that criminals don't want to mess with an armed victim, that they, if they're smart, like to find out if the victim is armed, that they don't appear to want to hurt their victim, 
that they think carrying a gun is asking for trouble, and that they try to avoid longer sentences, sentences by not carrying a gun, you get a more clear picture of criminal motivations as a whole. All of these questions, when considered together, make the earlier question I had regarding interpretation of mess around far more clear. And at the same time, they paint a picture of greater safety from merely owning a gun, regardless of whether it needs to be used or not. 